you'd be surprised to find out that your very own local bodies of water are holding on to some secrets. Not only are they diverse ecosystems in their own right, but they can tell us a lot about the planet we live on. Still waters run deep, it's said, and these videos are all the proof we need. But be warned, some pretty unexpected things can turn up there. From unbelievable to downright unexplainable. Don't believe us? Find out for yourselves. 15 Most Terrifying Things Found in Rivers and Swamps, Part 2. Ice Drift Russia Ever seen a tsunami of ice? The fearsome power of an ice drift was caught on film recently in the Russian Arctic. The eerie phenomenon is believed to be a sign that the short summer is finally arriving in the region. Giant ice blocks are forced ashore as the melting and cracking ice move downstream towards the Arctic Ocean as ice, in lumps of up to 3 feet thick, come ashore which can pile up as high as 16 feet tall. This is the first stage of the annual ice breaking. But even though it's an annual occurrence, it doesn't make it any less shocking. This sort of drifting ice can do a lot of damage to coastal areas, but on the bright side, summer's on its way. Drift ice consists of ice flows, individual pieces of sea ice 66 feet or more across. Drift ice can exert tremendous forces when rammed against structures and can shear off rudders and propellers from ships and strong structures anchored to the shore, such as piers. Unlike fast ice, which is fastened to a fixed object, drift ice is carried along by winds and sea currents, hence its name. As for the Russian ice drift, it won't be too long before the river will be fully clear, allowing boats to sail for a short summer season. What scientists found in a river has left people speechless. Do our eyes deceive us? It can't possibly be an actual dragon, and it's so small and not at all what we imagine when we think of a dragon. They're supposed to be powerful, mythical creatures. They're supposed to be powerful, mythical creatures, typically depicted as gigantic flying serpents or other reptiles with magical, spiritual, or supernatural qualities. This is not that. Dragons occur in many legends around the world. Like most other mythological creatures, dragons are perceived in different ways by different cultures. However, dragons have often been held to have major spiritual significance in various religions and cultures. Heck, they're practically the real stars of the shows like Game of Thrones. This strange creature isn't at all terrifying. In fact, it's pretty adorable. But we'd like to see what this creature would look like when it grows up. This tiny terror might just end up growing into something very scary. Have you ever seen anything like this? Who knew rivers and swamps could conceal something so unusual? Leave your thoughts in the comments with the hashtag Sweet Topic. Giant Crocodile This clip was titled Biggest Crocodile Caught on Tape. So it should be good. Four people on a boat, three near the front, and the person filming from the back are navigating what looks to be a remote river location along reeds on the river bank. There are no crocs in sight, as far as we can tell, when suddenly, underneath the skiff, a huge dark shadow swims below the surface. And it's cringe-inducing. This has to be a saltwater crocodile. It's the only member of the croc family that can get this size, and it's native to saltwater habitats in brackish wetlands, like this, from India's east coast across Southeast Asia and to Northern Australia, and it's the largest living reptile in crocodilian known. Males grow to a length of up to 20 feet and can weigh up to 2,900 pounds. The hunting methods utilized by these giant crocs are indistinct from any other crocodile with the hunting crocodile submerging and quietly swimming over to the prey before pouncing upwards, striking suddenly. Young saltwater crocodiles are capable of breaching their entire body into the air in a single upward motion while hunting prey that may be perched on low-hanging branches. These boaters don't want to be anywhere near this dark shadow if it decides to leap out of the water. Massive Anacondas if you live in or near the swamps in the Florida Everglades, anacondas like this might be your closest neighbors. If you're not afraid of snakes, consider this. They're believed to be one of the most dangerous creatures on the planet. The crazy thing is that these snakes are not supposed to be here. Although anacondas are not native to Florida, both green and yellow anacondas still found their way into the Everglades and are living there along with other species of snakes like the Burmese python. Since they primarily keep to themselves in the water, 
where they camouflage so well, they could have hidden from us for decades. Although there's no telling how long they've been living there, the first recorded sighting was in 2003. We don't know exactly how they showed up in South Florida, but experts suspect it came from the importation and uncontrolled release of exotic species into the wild. The Everglades National Park consists of more than one and a half million acres and is the ideal habitat for this invasive species to survive. It's full of swamps, mangroves, marshes, and rivers that hold the ultimate access to fish, mammals, and other reptiles to satisfy their enormous appetite. The anaconda is massive and can reach up to 30 feet long. <laughs> spell Jar In many traditions of folk magic, particularly in North America, a spell is sealed inside a jar, bottle, or other container. And as you can see, people are fishing them out of bodies of water using magnets. Yeah, people do fish with magnets. More on that in a bit. The spell jar, aka witchcraft, serves a number of purposes. The first is that it keeps the magic concentrated and prevents it from escaping before the spell has been completed. The other nice feature of a jar or bottle spell is its portability, whether it's buried under a doorstep, tucked into a hollow tree, or dropped in the water, and magnet fishermen are hauling them up all the time. Anybody can start magnet fishing. All you need is a strong magnet rope and a bit of patience. You just throw your rope into the water and pull in whatever your magnet attracts. And magnets' fishing popularities skyrocketed when hobbyists started sharing videos of their treasure hunts. Spell jars like these were usually made of pottery or glass and included sharp objects such as pins and bent nails. Random fact, some of these jars contained urine as well, belonging to the homeowner as a magical link to the property and family within. Ghost Forests As storms and droughts increase and sea levels rise from our changing climate, forested wetlands like this up and down the Atlantic coast are transforming from vibrant ecosystems to forests filled with dead or dying trees. Like all living organisms, trees die. But what's happened here is normal. Large patches of trees are dying simultaneously, and saplings aren't growing to take their place and it's because of the insidious role of salt. Sea level rise driven by climate change is making wetlands wetter in many parts of the world. It's also making them saltier. Rising seas are inundating the coast and salt water is seeping into wetland soils. Salts move through groundwater during phases when fresh water is depleted, such as during droughts. Salt water also moves drought canals and ditches, penetrating inland with help from the wind and high tides. Dead trees with pale trunks, devoid of leaves and limbs, are a telltale sign of high salt levels in the soil. The accelerating spread of these appropriately named ghost forests from New Jersey to Florida has ecologists alarmed and eager to understand how they're formed and what effect they have regionally and globally. <laughs> Sunken Dome Homes Built in 1981 on the southern tip of Marco Island on Cape Romano, in Florida, the dome house is an igloo-like concrete complex made up of white dome chambers. Now look at it. Today it's decaying and slipping slowly into the ocean. Many know about its whereabouts, but its origins were up to debate, from alien to secret cults. In truth, it was built by a retired oil producer and inventor. The original owner began work on the house with the idea that it would be completely self-sufficient and eco-friendly. Purchasing a barge, he began by moving the necessary supplies to the island, including the metal dome forms, two concrete mixers, and fresh water to mix the cement. Florida's turbulent weather was taken into account and the sturdy, rounded domes were able to sustain hurricane winds. Having a second use, rainwater would hit the domes and would wash down into a gutter system that surrounded them. After running the water through filters, the water was then able to be used for things such as showers or dishwashing. Solar panels were installed, providing free electricity to the house. Sounds ideal, right? But by 2007, the house's foundational pillars were permanently underwater. The ruins now serve as a reef with diverse marine life. Peat fire Peat soils around the world are made by the natural accumulation of partially decayed biomass and are the largest reserves of organic carbon. 
Because of this vast accumulation of fuel, once ignited, smoldering peat fires like this burn for very long periods of time. Months, years, despite extensive rains, weather changes, or firefighting attempts. Peat fires occur with some frequency worldwide in tropical, temperate, and boreal regions. Droughts, drainage, and changes in land use are thought to be the main causes. Possible ignition events can be natural, like lightning or a volcanic eruption, or even accidental ignition, or even worse, arson. The most studied peat megafire took place in Indonesia and led to an extreme haze event. The smoke covered large parts of Southeast Asia, even reaching Australia and China, induced a surge of respiratory emergencies in the population and disruption of shipping and aviation routes. Reports of peat fires lasting for several months are not usual, like the fires in Indonesia, the 2000 Delta fires in Botswana, or the 2008 Evans Road fire in North Carolina. And they can seem impossible to extinguish, devastating farming regions and destroying air quality. Floating Coffins Built on the Mississippi Delta, New Orleans is flanked by Lank Pontchartrain to the north and the Mississippi River to the south. The earth beneath this city is formed from silt deposits from the river that make the soil spongy and absorbent. And over the years, the high water table has wreaked havoc on the region. But to add to the challenge, some areas are actually 6 to 17 feet below sea level and sinking about one inch every year. And subjected to floating constantly, coffins are floating out of their graves, and it's been a problem for a very, very long time. So if staying afloat and above water is a challenge today, imagine how hard it would have been to bury a corpse 200 years ago. Since the first settlers arrived in 1718, they struggled with burying their dead in such water-saturated soil conditions. The burial plots in the cemeteries at the time were shallow due to the high water table. Grave diggers would dig only a few feet down before the grave would become soggy and begin to fill up with water. Coffins were ultimately floating on water as they were laid to rest, and it's only gotten worse. To this day, unpredictable flooding continues to lift up coffins and raise them out of the ground. <laughs> Carnivorous plants Even plants need to eat. A little water, some sunshine, maybe some extra nutrients from the soil. These plants, however, take feeding time to a whole new level. Carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of their nutrients from trapping and consuming animals. Typically, insects and other arthropods, like spiders, they can be found on all continents except Antarctica. The habitats of carnivorous plants are varied. Bogs, swamps, water bodies, water courses, forests, and sandy or rocky sites. For example, the Venus flytrap, pitcher plant, and bladderwort have key traits genetically associated with carnivory, trap leaf development, prey digestion, and nutrient absorption. Even crazier, although most meat-eating plants consume insects, larger plants are capable of digesting reptiles and small mammals. But while it's great for a nutrient top-up, carnivory doesn't replace the need for photosynthesis and root systems. Being carnivorous simply helps the plant make the most of all available resources. Carnivorous plants use a variety of strategies to lure prey into their traps. Strong-smelling nectar, an intense coloration that mimics flowers, while others camouflage themselves so that victims blunder into them. The intense coloration of trapping organs can give the impression that they're flowers when they're not, in fact, ingeniously adapted leaves. <laughs> Hunting spider. They're also known as fishing spiders, raft spiders, dock spiders, or wharf spiders. They hunt by waiting at the edge of a pool or stream. Then when they detect the ripples from the prey, they run across the surface to subdue it using their foremost legs, which are tipped with small claws. Like other spiders, they then inject venom with their hollow jaws to kill and digest the prey. They mainly eat insects, but some larger species are able to catch small fish. They can also climb beneath the water when they become encased in a silvery film of air. Crazy, right? And there are over a hundred species of these water-hunting spiders throughout the world. Rather than hunting on land or by wading in a web, these spiders hunt on the surface of the water itself. For fishing spiders, the water surface serves the same function as a web does for other spiders. 
The method they use to fish for insects is to hold on to the shore with their back legs while the rest of their body lies on the water. They stretch out their front legs and wait as if listening. Their front legs feel the vibrations carried on the water, just as other spiders feel the vibrations in a web. A little water doesn't slow down this hunting spider. Gross Ancient Butter Whatever you do, don't eat this butter because it's old, older than you think. These buttery discoveries, which are called bog butter, can be thousands of years old. In 2009, a 77-pound, 3,000-year-old oak barrel of the stuff was found, and in 2013, a 100-pound, 5,000-year-old chunk was found. Many examples of the butter are found in museums as well. So what is bog butter? It's exactly what it sounds like. Butter made from cow's milk buried in a bog. It's usually found in earthenware pots, wooden containers, animal skins, or wrapped in bark and takes on a pungent, cheesy odor. What makes it special is its age. After spending so much time in the cool, damp peat, it starts to take on the appearance and consistency of paraffin wax. According to a study on bog butter, some of the chunks are non-dairy. When analyzing carbon isotopes in nine samples of the butter, they found that six of them were indeed dairy products, while the other three were from animals, perhaps rendered fat stored for later use. The cool, low-oxygen, high-acid environment of the bog made a perfect natural refrigerator. Seeing as butter was a valuable commodity and was used to pay taxes, saving it for times of drought, famine, or war would have been a good idea. Abandoned Plane Over 50 years ago, a plane crashed deep in the woods in Rhode Island on the U.S. East Coast, killing one passenger aboard and injuring five others. The plane was left at the crash site, and now, decades later, we're getting a closer look at it. According to experts, the flight in question took place on Monday, November 22, 1971. Two couples, along with the pilot and co-pilot, were traveling from Chatham, Massachusetts, back home to New Jersey through rain and snow on a very cold and windy day. Just as the aircraft was making its way across Rhode Island, passengers reported seeing ice forming on the winds. That ice caused the left engine to fail, and the plane could not keep a safe level of altitude. Reports say the pilot tried to make an emergency landing nearby, but was unable to make it. Both engines must have stopped as the airplane stalled and crashed into the woods in East Greenwich. There were so many trees as they went down that the wings were ripped from the plane, causing it to flip upside down and the fuselage was cracked open on impact. Local newspapers report that the woods were so dense that rescue workers had to trudge through two feet of mud for half a mile to get out there. And there, in an undisclosed location, it still remains. Wisconsin School Bus Imagine the surprise on a swamp exploration in Florida when someone came across this, an abandoned school bus that had made it all the way from Wisconsin over 1,300 miles away. And despite looking like a set of some post-apocalyptic horror movie where the human bus riders did not escape the onslaught of fictional zombies, it's really just the passage of time that took over this old custom Chevy school bus. This was what automobile fans referred to as a chop job, a bus converted into a camper, and it looks like it didn't quite make it to its destination. Imagine rolling around the country in this back in its heyday. It was found in this Florida swamp with the name of the school district from Wisconsin on the sides, its license plate registered to 1988. The rear side quarters of the bus actually look like the front quarter of an old van or truck. Now we really want to know the whole story behind this strange vehicle. You don't find too many old school buses converted into campers. It's definitely a custom job. But if the walls could talk inside this abandoned bus, what would they say? Why did they change the bus? What's the reason for it to be in Florida? Those are just a couple questions right off the top of the head. Unfortunately, we may never know the truth. <laughs> Jumbo Jets no one was injured when 19 cars from a westbound train in Montana derailed about 10 miles west of Alberton. However, as you can see, three Boeing 737 fuselages tumbled down a steep bank and into the Clark Fork River. 
the components, which included six complete 737 fuselages, as well as parts for a 777 and 747, were en route to Boeing's Washington State Headquarters for final assembly after being manufactured in Kansas. The accident dumped two of the 737 into the river, leaving them partially submerged in water, while another came to rest on the river embankment just above the water surface. A fourth 737 fuselage that was damaged set behind the tracks. The train was reportedly traveling 31 miles per hour in an area with a speed limit of 35 miles per hour when the accident occurred. And before long, Boeing personnel began working to extract the fuselages from the river, assessing the damage to determine what impact the accident had on production timelines. Not to mention the ecology of this Montana River Valley. But it could have been so much worse. Although it was a costly spill for the airplane maker and the train company, incredibly no one was injured in the derailment. But what a scene. Killer Turtle The Mata Mata Turtle originates in South America's Amazon and Orinoco basins. They live in the leaf litter at the bottom of shallow streams. And as you can see, their leaf-shaped heads, bark-like flat shells, and ragged skin flaps make it easy to blend in. But don't be fooled, they suck up fish like a vacuum. Instead of hunting, they wait for dinner to come to them. Blending in with the vegetation definitely comes in handy. When fish approach, the turtle stretches its neck out and opens its mouth wide to create a vacuum. They expel the water and swallow their prey whole because their jaws are physically unable to chew. Still, they're one of a kind. These so-called side neck turtles can't actually tuck their heads into their shells. Instead, they bend them to the side. You can take the Mata Mata out of the Amazon, but you can't take the Amazon out of the Mata Mata. This odd looking turtle has been called a lot of names. Not just needle nose and leaf head, the freshwater turtle was originally classified in 1783 and has been renamed 14 times over the last 200 years, most recently in 1992. The common name translates to kill kill in Spanish. So think about these things the next time you're visiting your local rivers and swamps. They could be a gold mine of treasure and on the other hand, a total nightmare. But don't be afraid, videos like these will protect you from these freaky findings.